Uh, first of all, thank you, Mark, for your invitation. I'm very pleased and honored to come to Berlin. This is my first time to come to Berlin and Germany to attend the I ICD annual conference. Now, uh, I'm not an expert in cultural diplomacy, but I'm, as Mark has already introduced, I have a lot of experience working in China and also publish a lot uh, in education in Asia and Hong Kong and also China. So today I try to share my initial views on this topic. Uh, cultural diplomacy and education in China, issues and potentials for cross-continental co uh, co uh, cooperation. Now, uh, the structure of my short speech will be divided to give an overview, followed by some my personal observations, uh, through some examples of university collaboration, and also the Confucius Institute, the CI. And also, as you and some of the friends uh, here know, there's been uh, some unionists and also some criticism about uh, the uh, Confucius Institute issues and also um, we take into account uh, issues related to other uh, countries' way of implementation. And in the final uh, section, I will try to uh, highlight a few concerns and also possible directions for development. First of all, an overview. Uh, this is a picture, a portrait of a periodical offering of a 6th century Chinese painting portraying various uh, uh, emissaries. Actually, there's a long tradition about diplomacy uh, exchange. I, I remember that actually an example in ICD advisory board meeting mentioning about the silk road. Actually, the silk road is not only about uh, exchange of goods, but also an important history uh, of exchange ideas uh, between uh, exchange of ideas between Western and Eastern civilizations. Diplomacy refers to the practice of conducting negotiation between representative groups of states. This could be done, first of all, uh, through the intersection of professional diplomats on issues related to peacemaking, trade, war, economics, culture, environment, and human rights. There are traditional forms of diplomacy, ranging from policemen, monetary diplomacy, gunboat diplomacy, public diplomacy, and nuclear diplomacy. As you all know, there's a new form of diplomacy known as the soft power, as called by Joseph Nye uh, in 1990, referring to, uh, as part of the, uh, the term cultural diplomacy under, well, broadly, the public diplomacy. As a kind of soft power, cultural diplomacy refers to the ability to get what you want through attraction rather than cohesion or payments. It arises from a country's culture, political ideas, and policies. So it's being called a linchpin of the public uh, diplomacy, cultural activity demonstrate the best of the nation. Part of my speech is based on the assumption that uh, without government apparent intervention, people will be more willing to accept the concepts. And also, there are also a great variety of cultural elements for each country which could feed more people. Now, as pointed out by an author, Waller, in the, in the paper, Strategic Influence Public Diplomacy, uh, he suggests that uh, it's better to aim at a win-win situation in which co cooperation with others but not utilizing others. So this is an important concept, I believe, uh, to build up a win-win situation to enhance cultural diplomacy uh, between nations. There are many examples around the world. Today, of course, I will focus a few examples. Uh, one of them is Confucius Institute. But you can see that, you know, that in different countries, there are very examples ranging from British Council, Japan Foundation, and so on, as a sign kind of agencies for uh, promoting cultural diplomacy. As you can see in pictures, for example, in, uh, in Purdue University, uh, in many local uh, overseas universities now, there's an encouragement of setting up Confucius Institute uh, through the influence uh, of the hand band. And you can see that uh, the Confucius Institute and other agencies, comparable agencies, uh, organize a range of cultural, educational, and other activities that promote uh, the nation's concern. So the second session, I will briefly touch upon uh, some recent examples. Now, you can see, put, put uh, uh, the issue in the context. Actually, the early states, since the establishment of the People's Republic of China in 1949, they are not very clear about diplomatic relations with other countries. And the traditional Chinese ideology does not consider this as a very important agenda or important element for a country. So it's under the strong influence of nationalism, protecting its sovereignty and also territorial integrity after the internal war. However, there's, uh, we witnessed rapid changes since the 1980s when the reform of open policy in China was implemented. First of all, 
gradually there's importance of foreign relations being uh, emphasized, and also there's increasing closer link with other countries to support its economic booth and development. I mean, as you can see that, since the 1978 and also 80s, there's an open in, in China, the open and reform policy, where the China has, uh, uh, as a big country, now engaged in the, uh, uh, enormous economic and social development. But still, such policy follow traditional way in which is past limited. Gradually, since 1980s, there's gradual emphasis on the importance of a soft power and more negotiations now with our countries. We can see a lot of encouragement now of Chinese studying abroad, encouraging foreigners to study and also invest in China, and also there's a strong encouragement of cross-continental collaboration in the higher education sector and research. And also, you can see that there's a gradual setting up of the Confucius Institute, further serving as an important milestone and also an agency for promoting uh, education and also cultural ideas. One example, but that we can see in higher education sector is that with the implementation of the reform the open policy in China, gradually there's an increasing collaboration between universities in China and others. Different kinds of collaboration we can see that, ranging from international journal research projects. If you go to any major university in China now, you can see a lot of different institute, different journal research projects. There's an increasing and active engagement in different uh, kinds of different international conferences. You, you, you can see a lot of examples now, engaging in dialogue, engaging in the story di discourse on various important topics. Also exchange programs among students. If you really want to go to China in, in many universities, they are asking for opportunity for exchange program for students and staff, so they're really keen to exchange, engage in educational exchange. And also, we can also see uh, examples of branch of universities in China. So these are some of the recent examples. For example, the Australia China Science and Research Fund uh, supporting science research collaboration of mutual benefit to both countries. It's strongly managed by the Australia's Department of Industry and also China Ministry of Science and Technology. There's only one of the few examples that we can see in joint efforts. There's a lot of conferences in China and also University in China is more and active in organizing both inbound and also outbound exchange programs. We can see a dramatic increase being observed in number of students joining such exchange program as well. One example is the second up through the collaboration of the University of Nottingham. Uh, this uh, Ning, Ningbo, uh, Ningbo uh, China ca campus in the Ningpo. And uh, you can see that uh, this is a quite a remarkable example of joint uh, university collaboration and really setting up an offshore campus in China. So this is the campus, and you see that. I believe in future, uh, given uh, more flexibility and also mutual trust and also collaboration, there's much potential actually for overseas university to establish overseas campus uh, in, in, in China and also in return, probably there are more collaboration activities between Chinese university and overseas uh, universities. So we can see an overseas campus of the University of Nottingham situated in the city of Ningbo near Ch uh, Shanghai, China. The University uh, China Foreign University opened its door in China in 2004 with approval of the Chinese Ministry of Education. Basically, it's run by the, operated by the University of Nottingham, UK, with collaboration support from the Zhejiang Wanli Education Group, which is a private education service provider. So you can see that gradually the business group is already engaging in this sort of endeavors. Also, there are links with some 60 Chinese universities with exchange agreements and joint research projects. Uh, and also are offering a wide range of international courses with special focus on China studies. So China study become now an emerging important field in academia. And for example, uh, related to management of Chinese, given the uh, increase in business in China, electronic and electrical engineering with Chinese, et cetera. The second example I would like to share with you, friends, uh, is uh, the Confucius Institute. There's a saying quoted by Chen Min in the, within CI Confucius Institute, China spreads soft power. The Confucius Institute is named after Confucius, of course some of you may know is, uh, is our uh, important figure in education, uh, which spread Confu uh, Confucianism and also important ideas in education. The first Confucius Institute was established in 2004 in Seoul and also uh, Uchanistan. And since then, they've expanded rapidly 
and as of July 2013, there are around 30 and 27 Const uh, Confucius Institute in nine, 93 countries and regions. Uh, comparable to British Council Alliance and so on, and promoting Chinese language and facilitating uh, cultural exchanges. However, it's not totally independent in a certain way. It's at best it's a operating with established schools uh, and also influence of the, uh, uh, of the uh, agencies in China providing funding teachers and also ed educational materials. Wherever international partners in different countries provide facilities and staff. The Confucius Institute, CI, is established as a language center rather than a school of culture. The initial aim is to promote culture and also language. It's claimed not to be a government organization. However, it's operated under Han Ban, which is the office of the Chinese Language Cultural International, with the strong support from the Ministry of the Education of the People's Republic of China and also United Framework Department. So in a certain way, it's still under strong influence under the central government in China. It's funding directly, the CS funding directly the hosting schools and also institutes in other local uh, overseas universities. The director of most CIs is Chinese and have control of most policies in each CI in overseas universities. There's teaching of simplified Chinese and Mandarin Chinese, but it raises a question whether there are different kinds of Chinese, for example, uh, in Hong Kong and also in Taiwan, we use the, the, the full character, so to speak. You can see some pictures signing between treaty between the CI and the University in New Zealand, so it's um, uh, uh, spreading and developing all, all around the world. You can see a CI one uh, middle school, so they have uh, projects. The student of the CI in, involved in different education projects, and also you can see at a term performance conducted by CI student in Africa, uh, in a in a university in Africa. Also, you can see this picture showing foreign student learning Chinese calligraphy in classes organized by Confucius Institute and the CI in the University of Aberdeen. Although it's, uh, I, I, I personally, I think uh, the CI has done a lot of remarkable and influential and, and very good work in the promoting uh, educational ideas and cultural ideas. However, you can see on the web and also some of the scholarly articles, there are some concerns or also criticisms of the Confucius Institute. On one hand, we say it's very unique. I mean, the, the CI and also uh, related endeavors and measures in China. For example, uh, the CI has been seen as a Trojan house for Chinese uh, uh, hydrogen money. And also, despite the increasing number of CIs, its popularity remains low in some countries. So uh, this is quoted by some of the uh, uh, scholars uh, on the internet. Uh, known as the paper by Yang and Xiao, is called the Confucius Institute as a Trojan Houses for Chinese hegemony. So the CIs are not relevant to any kinds of cap caption elements. Basically, Confucius is not about religion. It's not about religious belief. It's basically about culture and language. So it's not religious at all. And also, CIs more than promoting Chinese language education. It also aims at promoting internationalization of Chinese culture and also increasing the soft power of China. The CI officially aims at a two-way cultural exchange with very good intention rather than one-way cultural transmission. The CI conducts programs for those who teach Chinese locally, so in a way, it tries to alleviate its political background and influence. The CI works with different institutes of China studies in Europe and US, it also facilitates greater exchange. But still, despite the good intention, the politicized mission of CIA has been in, inevitably stirred up some concerns and doubts about against China's growing uh, global cultural nationalism or, or, or influence. According to Jonas Knight, a soft power considers three sources, culture, values, and uh, foreign policies. The CI does it in another way, but however, has been criticized uh, rather limited. So normally we have two approaches, either inviting in, in which cultural activities are organized in China to attract others to go inside country, and also going out, activities are conducted in other countries to attract others. This, we can see in the case of CI and also related activities that the gradual investment in multi multimedia and auto, uh, audiovisual materials, and you can see that uh, different kinds of activities uh, uh, campaigns and other competition has been organized to promote Chinese language and culture. 
The CI also does a lot of warranty works and also the Chinese uh, parade, as you can see in the picture. The CI warranty is also teaching opening ceremony and training seminars. So in conclusion, I've just shown you some example about university collaboration, uh, Confucius Institute issues. So modern diplomacy usually showcase and focus on the foreign issues. We try to aim at improving, enhancing social cohesion. We try to, uh, to oppose discrimination against minorities and migrants. So we can really make good use of example. For example, in the British Council, the British Council organized a wide variety of localized activity to cater for needs and interests of people. For example, they actually get into the local areas to uh, cater for needs. So it's an example, good example, improving social cohesion. So basically, we can consider whether the CI can also work with the local community to uh, engage in activities for enhancing not only cultural and language, but also the social betterment of the local community. There are also some examples of opposing discrimination against minority and migrants. Just show an example in Germany, uh, there's an uh, anti-racism campaign concert uh, in, 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 in recently. So there, there are many, many uh, options, opportunities, and uh, example activity in which the CI and also other agencies that promote uh, cultural diplomacy can consider. The caption concerns could well serve as a basis for future China's diplomacy instead of just focusing on letting others to know more about us, more about China, but this kind of the world issue should be addressed with reference to Chinese ideology. So actually, we can also provide some Chinese perspective and Chinese dialogue on the uh, important issues of mutual interest and worldwide concern. There have been some other suggestions of how to implement cultural dip uh, diplomacy effectively. Green proposes four trends. First of all, uh, promotion of language. Secondly, emphasis of a country's educational opportunity. Thirdly, increasing use of the web in cultural diplomacy. And finally, engaging people in networks built around a common theme. For the promotion of language, in Chinese we call in Cantonese, as well Manhua Wai Jiao in Putonghua. No, my, my Mandarin is not, is not perfect, by the way. The Chinese language is unique in the sense that it's one, some of the few languages in the world which is not based on alphabet system. So when you really uh, get into the Chinese character, you can see the ch uh, traditional Chinese words still retain the ancient oracle style words which emulate the traits and also characteristics of different objects. The Chinese language also also do, in do business with Chinese people, of course, and, uh, and, and, and organization. So it's an important language with community with people in the Chinese community. There's an increasing number of people inter interested in the language has been observed due to its uniqueness and increasing functions. You can see that Chinese uh, language has been the office of third language and other uh, uh, language of uh, interest uh, in the uh, secondary school curriculum in some uh, individual countries overseas. There's also increasing emphasis on a country's educational opportunities. So China has one of the best uh, high education in the world, have said, you know, in Hong Kong, for example, where, 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 I, where I live, uh, there are eight UGC funded institutes in Hong Kong, you know, uh, they, are, uh, uh, they have very uh, high rankings uh, in, in the league table. And you can see that, for example, Hong Kong uh, University of Hong Kong, China University of Hong Kong, and, uh, and so on. In mainland, you can see the P Peking University, uh, Tsinghua University, and some others. Uh, they, are, they are investing a lot of uh, uh, measures uh, and resources in building up this university into a world-class university. So if this would be further emphasized through education, people from other countries can also know and understand more about China. So there's an important opportunity and venue for uh, collaboration uh, through uh, in, uh, research, uh, through uh, different kinds of exchange. This provides really a good potential in the future, I believe. And also in achieving the main aim of cultural diplomacy, uh, this will also bring mutual benefit to one another. For the increasing use of the web in cultural diplomacy, the Chinese web has often quote one of the most closed one in the world in the past. However, you can see that in recent years, such kind of restriction has been gradually alleviated. So we can see that with the gradual opening up of the uh, Chinese web, I can see great potential also in future uh, about using you know, MOOCs and, and also other media uh, for uh, uh, mutual uh, communication exchange. 
To catch up with the world's increasing trend of using web, this is essential due to effectiveness and efficiency of using web to spread information. On the other hand, it provides an opportunity to showcase the openness of China. Lastly, to engage people in networks that build around a common theme, the Confucius Institute may serve as a central platform for such to happen. The CI is only one of the example agencies. There also are possibilities. And instead of focusing on it's just a language and culture center, it, should, it shall also consider itself as a cultural center. So you can engage the CI working with local communities, local uh, universities in, uh, around internationally to really engage in, uh, in activity, mutual interests, and, and, and benefits. And also, it allows exchange ideas on different issues and topics within China. So the vision, together with the theme of CI every year, have to be made clear and reiterated. And in education world, in which uh, I'm more familiar with, uh, we can even consider a more you know, different thinking. Uh, in, in recent years, I've been working different pr uh, book projects, uh, usually engaging in, in titles, subtitles, like uh, Western and Chinese perspective. If you really uh, uh, look at the, the recent uh, interest in Asia and also China, there's an increasing number of publications uh, looking at educational developments and also social developments uh, in China. Recently, I'm exploring uh, the possibility of a project in studying the didactic, didactics, which is the, the J, uh, German tradition, a very famous uh, German tradition in education, and also uh, I, I believe in China, uh, they have built up a very important tradition in Chinese pedagogy as well. So we can see there's a lot of uh, room and potential for dialogue, for learning from each other, the wisdom uh, in different traditions. For didactic, it's not only German, but actually there are also Nordic tradition about didactic uh, uh, studies. So I believe there's much uh, potential for us to reflect on, to share, and to learn from each other. Also, for at risk of current implementation of Chinese way of cultural diplomacy, it emphasizes not only on a dialectal spread of knowledge and ideology, it also encourages a mutual exchange. The German didactic, however, emphasizes, for example, engaging students' minds. So it allows, in future, uh, emphasis on academic research, opportunities to discuss on issues that others will also care more about. The space sponsors, uh, Confucius Institute, may also affect each other's perception towards CI. So my personal observation and suggestion is that there may be increasing cooperation with other universities may help solve this problem. For example, if we engage in more uh, overseas university, the credibility of overseas university may also enhance the credibility of CI. So our openness and also uh, engagement of voices, university in different endeavors will be a uh, healthy and positive sign for future consideration. And also foreign trained human resources may also alleviate others' misunderstanding and bias towards the Confucius Institute. Finally, there may be all focus on common ways of communication through social media and mobile apps. As an alternative tool to spread the good ideas of China and also to reflect on social development, and also allow others to reflect and suggest the aspect that China may need to improve and enhance. It also to showcase the, the, the achievement of China, the key aims of cultural diplomacy in which a win-win situation could be as established. So in conclusion, if we can achieve the, the key aims and values of cultural diplomacy advocated by Green in 2011, uh, Green suggests new directions as follows. We gradually shift from events to projects, gradually by bilateral to multilateral, from presentation to collab collaboration, cooperation, from processes to more mutual pro uh, process of communication, negotiation, and mutual understanding, from one way to two way, from telling to listening, and finally, from self-promotion to values promotion. So thank you very much indeed uh, for allowing me to share with you my initial interest. Thank you.